Hey guys, what's up? Brent Calmer from Blue Water VST. Sorry I've been out of the loop for a few weeks. I recently moved uh, from Washington, D.C. to Arlington, Virginia, for those of you who are interested. And this weekend I'm in, in uh, Seattle, Washington. Kind of on business, but I'm staying at my folks' place. That's why the background looks different. So let's move on to uh, from where we left off. We left off kind of at the edge of this uh, modulation section with these knobs, which we have not covered, and uh, this section down here, which, are, which is a series of pages that impact the sequencer tracks. Now, let's start over here. This is our uh, snapshot, the snapshot we've been working with right now. And this is the main page, right? So the main page offers us the uh, waveform view, shows us the actual sample, the sample select and sample transposition uh, controls, over here, this is kind of an initialized control, and this one here, I'm going to be dead, dead honest with you, I have no idea what it does. I've spent far too much time trying to figure this out. It says if switched on, the pitch modulation is always active. If switched off, new modulation events are only recognized if the tri triggering gate is open. I've tried that every which way. It's probably something far too obvious to spend any more time on, but if anyone knows, leave a comment. It would be great. Uh, but we've gone over this uh, pan and sends. The send is for the uh, delay and the gator, respectively. I'm going to turn this off so it's not in the way. But if we move next door to this envelope, we have a uh, kind of different uh, envelope, not, not a comprehensive envelope uh, control. An envelope, just to review, is a way of controlling a sound through time. So we have attack, decay, sustain, release, all of these different stages of the sound. But the best way to see how this works is just by coming in here and, and turning knobs very unscientifically. Let's use this one, and I'm going to turn off these other tracks, as I always do. Sometimes I wonder how much time I've spent in my life turning off tracks. It would be nice to have a solo. That's a feature request, if anyone from Native Instruments is listening. Um, so this velocity sensitivity is affects how, how the velocity, as drawn in by the bar height here, impacts the the volume of the sound essentially. So if we have it set to nothing, it doesn't matter how what velocity there is, it's always going to sound the same. We start turning this up and we notice that the velocity starts making a much bigger difference. So that's velocity. I think we had it set somewhere down here. Now this decay is where things get interesting. This decay setting is a decay setting for the track, but there's also kind of this global decay up here which is not labeled and they call this decay scale and this affects all of the tracks. In addition, um, just as a sidelight, there is a decay, a decay scale modulation control under here. Uh, so again, you can is this modulation gone wild? Uh, if you choose to modulate that, that's, that's at your disposal. But let's go back down to the uh, actual track. I'm going to turn this up and the, the sound will completely tra transform it before your very ears. Right now, now if I turn this down, it gets to be almost clippy sound. Next door, we have a dynamic attack and dynamic decay uh, set of controls. And these are modulatable. So let's well, let's first just control these. Uh, I'm not sure if they do anything if they're not being modulated. And now, we're modulating with the uh, orange lane, and you can hear that both the decay and the attack, I'm going to turn down the decay so we can hear just the effect the attack is having. So it's really changing that it's modulating essentially the attack time. So sometimes it's fading in very slowly and sometimes it's coming in fast. And it's based on these, this modulation data. Very spacey, very cool. Now if we do it the same thing with decay, and that seems to be almost a neg negative modulation, right? So these are things to play with. Um, again, the interaction between them can be very complex. So, uh, you know, it's hard to, to look for a specific effect you want and dial it in. I think it's better just to start playing with the knobs and, and see what you get. This no mute section uh, next door is essentially a choke parameter, which means that if you want another track to 
turn, if you want, say, for example, you have hi-hats playing, but every time you have an open hat playing, you don't want to hear the hi-hats, that's what this would be for. So you would scroll through uh, and tell it which track you want to be to mute this track. Kind of more of a, a uh, advanced feature if you're programming drums. These sections, you'll, you'll notice that this section, the pan, the sends, the master on off, and the master level all stay the same no matter what page you're on. So those are always the same. So that covers the envelope. Let's move, move, back, move next door to uh, start. Start is a, uh, a fortunately very easy to understand and very, and very uh, useful parameter. It just changes the sample start point. So you can hear immediately when I start turning this up, it's going to, it's starting at a different point in the sample. And uh, if you f flip back over here to the main sample display, you'll see that it's that white line, which indicates where it's where it's playing, is in fact starting farther over to the right in the sample waveform display. And like everything else in Massive, you can modulate this as well. So let's modulate it with the our, our good old orange line. Positive modulation. And we jump back over here, and we see how you know it's really going to jump around when we start modulating. We can also do negative modulation. Very cool feature. Ad adds some dynamics, keeps your, your drum sounds from becoming boring, and accesses a different part of the sound, which is kind of cool. If you have very short sounds, it's nice to add variety by picking out different parts of the waveform. Okay, we're going to go next door to filter now. And filter is a filter section that uh, is slightly different, set up in a slightly different way, has all the stuff you're used to. Now again, uh, drive is uh, there's a global control for drive up here and there's a global control for cut up here which is cutoff frequency my my advice is just to set these to the max and then on the global controls and then control each individual sequencer track as you like excuse me uh, so let's get into this if I turn up this drive this is a saturation drive and some overdrive kind of cool effect this cutoff is our cutoff frequency, right? And what you'll notice is that right now it's being modulated. I'm going to turn off this modulation. And now you're just going to hear the filter itself. Sorry if these mouse movements are a little jerky. I'm using my touchpad here. It's not ideal, but it gets the job done. But what I, what I, what I mean when I say this is a little different is that there's actually a knob which selects the type of filter you're using, and it's labeled BHL, and that stands for band pass, high pass, and low pass. So when it's all the way over here to the left, you're using a low pass filter, right? So you're letting in the higher frequencies, and you turn this knob right. You move it up to the 12 o'clock position, you're using high pass, right? So you're, you're cutting out more of the low frequencies as you move to the right. And then a band pass, of course, just lets through a particular band that is selected by if you scroll through here. So that's our filter section. Now, the grain section is probably the most powerful and the most out there of all of these pages. The grain section is a grain resynthesis, which means that it's essentially taking the sound, pulling it apart, and putting it back together in layman's terms. The effect is really spacey, really out there, and uh, also can be really cool. And in fact, this very the very top sequencer track is actively using that, the grain resynthesis. You hear it's very kind of robotic and spacey sounding. If I turn this off, the modulation, it's almost just kind of like this water you know, dripping sound. Let me turn this down so we just have a very uh, you know, turn off all the other sources of modulation so we know exactly what's happening here. So uh, we'll move back over to grain and this is our unadulterated sound. right? It's just playing over and over and over. Now if we start turning up this speed knob and the speed knob indicates or determines the position determines how the, re the grain resynthesis engine is pulling the sound apart and putting it back together. And the higher up you turn it, the more the more of an effect it will have. So, so as we turn it up, it starts to kind of almost sound like it's, the sound is falling apart. Right. 
Now the real variety here, of course, comes with the modulation. So when we modulate, I mean, that is like vintage sci-fi right there. Again, play with this, find out what works, and be aware that even really small changes in this speed knob will give you radical, when you start modulating, will give you radical changes in the sound. You can also negatively modulate. And it sounds like fusion jazz or something. No offense to you fusion jazz people, I'm just kidding. Anyway, this has been the, uh, the pages section for the sequencer tracks. And as promised, next time we'll move down into the sequencer tracks themselves and get into the looping capabilities and the triplet modes, which are very cool for creating rhythms. And uh, again, thanks for staying with me. I hope I haven't gone too fast. I don't want to bore you guys. Sometimes it's easy to go, ah, 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 you drone on and on. Anyway, didn't want to do that. Um, again, any comments are welcome. And I'll be back at you real soon. See ya.